for environment, and uh, we are really very much concerned about this. And once the Bang Samoro is there, we are going to uh, uh, look into the veracity of, uh, of these reports. The uh, probable minerals in the Bang Samoro. In, in Maguindanao, uh, there is a promising deposit of gold, silver, copper, coal, limestone, shale, and, and others, mainly in the municipalities of South Opi, Sharif, Agwak, Talayan, Liguasan Marsh. But most of this, of this <coughs> potential mineral deposits needs exploration. Um, so there are also in Sharif Kabunsuan province, if you remember this, this was the province that was created by the uh, autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. But at, uh, lately, it was declared unconstitutional by the, uh, by the Supreme Court. And so uh, Sharif, uh, Sharif Kabunsuan province uh, now went back to its uh, mother province of uh, uh, Maguindanao. Also in, uh, in, 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 in Lanao del Sur, such as in Butig, Masyo, Kapay, and Tagulwan, in Sulu, such as in Hulu, Panamao, Parang, and of course, the Sulu Sea, which has a promising deposit of gas and oil. And of course, in, in Tawi-Tawi, which is partially explored because of the presence of uh, uh, active mining now, in the, uh, uh, in the area, in the so-called Tumbagaan Island, if I am not mistaken. So, prospects of mining in Maguindanao. Evidently, there is little indication of interest in minerals in Maguindanao, other than the exploration permit issued to Moro Development Company for 6,804 hectares in Dato Blasinswat, Maguindanao. Review of other literature revealed some iron prospects in Western Mindanao within Maguindanao. In Sulu, uh, copper deposits of Tumbagaan Island, the mine was operated before World War II. So um, I was not yet born. <laughs> Shipped to Japan about 1,040 1, tons, metric tons of ore that contained 10% Coffer and of course gold. In Tawi Tawi, information collected from earlier publication of the NGB indicate uh, copper deposits of the Philippines by Kinkel and Sa uh, Santo Sinigo uh, identified two copper occurrences in Tawi Tawi. And these are the following copper deposit of Tawi Tawi in Languyan. Explored in 1964 by Sulu Minerals Incorporated, copper minerals occur as malachite, azurite, and kersokola. However, there were no sulfides noted. Assay yielded grade 5% copper in oxidized one. Nickel deposit in Languyan Island. Tawi Tawi. There is currently an active mining operations there, as I have mentioned before, in this location, uh, in this uh, area, uh, by the SR Languyan Mining Corporation. The owner, uh, actually, is uh, a close relative of the governor, and uh, their partner are uh, uh, Chinese. So prospects of mining in uh, in Lano del Sur. It was gathered during an F uh, focus group discussion in Marawi City that small-scale gold mining is taking place within the province, but there is no documentation that these activities have been issued by the uh, uh, LGUs. So, so this, these are the mining, uh, small-scale mining firms that uh, I am referring to when I mentioned that it, uh, it is not with, within the radar scheme of the in MGB ARMM. Now, let me move to a very important uh, uh, portion of this presentation, which is the challenges to mining industry in the Bangsamoro. And uh, uh, you know it more than me, that uh, one of these is the, 
national government's ambivalent or very cold treatment uh, towards mining. And number two, because of the unstable peace and order situation. Number three, lack of data on mineral resources. And number four, lack of technical capacity within MGB, ERMM, and the LGUs. But friends, notwithstanding these challenges, there are bright prospects for mining in the Bangsamoro. And number one, the Bangsamoro Parliament once it is in place, can enact laws attractive to the entry of private investments and favorable to the operation of mining companies that strictly comply with responsible mining policies, rules, and regulations, such as was what we are hearing from the practice in, in Australia and in Canada and uh, in other parts of the world. But of course, there are uh, countries that are uh, not uh, uh, very cognizant about uh, the practice of responsible mining. So, let me uh, mention also a portion of the framework annex on the Bangsamoro on revenue generation and wealth sharing, which says, to encourage investments and other economic activities, the Bangsamoro government shall have the power to grant tax exemptions, rebates, tax holidays, and other incentives with reference to Part C below. The Part C below refers to the present autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. The Bangsamoro may also opt instead to impose a flat rate lump sum tax on small and medium enterprises. Number two, bright prospect is the fact that the establishment of a truly autonomous Bangsamoro government will result to dramatic improvement of peace and order in conflict-affected communities in Mindanao. I am not saying thus that once the Bangsamoro is there, all this security concern will be gone overnight. But what I am saying is once the Bangsamoro is there, a big chunk of the problem, security problem, is already solved, and the MILF now as a government will be a partner of the national government in addressing security concerns within the Bangsamoro core territories. Number three, the Bangsamoro government can partner with the private sector in collecting and analyzing needed data and conducting an inventory of mines and minerals in the Bangsamoro. Perhaps some of those who are present in this August Hall will be uh, interested to partner with us. Number four, the Bangsamoro government can link up with strategic partners for capacity building in the mining sector. Now, let me move to uh, a provision of the Bangsamoro Basic Law, which is Section 32, on sharing in exploration, development, and utilization of natural resources. And I quote, the central government income from taxes derived from the exploration, development, and utilization of all natural resources within the Bangsamoro shall be allocated as follows. For non-metallic minerals, mineral resources, such as gravel and sand and others, such revenues shall pertain fully uh, to the Bangsamoro and its local government units. But in, case, in cases of metallic minerals, such as the one I have presented, 75% shall pertain to the Bangsamoro and 25% shall pertain to the national government. With regards to fossil fuels, such as petroleum and natural gas, coal and uranium, the same shall be shared equally, 50-50, between the central government and the Bangsamoro government. Now, as a prelude to my next slide, let me first present to you the facing of, 
our plan. Our plan is composed of three phases. Phase one, which is the immediate or short term. Phase two, the medium term. And phase three, which is the long term. Presently, what we have completed is the intermediate or uh, medium term, which we call the transitional development plan. We just would like, we intend to jumpstart the just economy that we want to be in place in the Bangsamoro. And this covers a year of more or less, more than one year or a maximum of two years. And the rest is until 2002, will, which will be composed of the, the uh, medium term. We, wa we want to build a strong foundation of the uh, uh, Bangsamoro, but the long term, we leave it already to the regular Bangsamoro government. Now, part five, Part five of my presentation, I want to move on the recommendations on moving forward in the short and medium term. And these are the recommendations that we have given to the MILF Central Committee. And we would like to give to the Bank Samoro Transition Authority once it is in place. And number one, we want to attract investment in the Bank Samoro through the formulation of mining and minerals development policy and develop rules and regulations conducive to responsible mining. Number two, we want to offer tax incentives for private investors interested in mining. Number three, we want to establish a one-stop shop for promoting private sector investments in mining and other uh, areas in the private sector. We, we are hearing that the, the reasons why it is, uh, why, why uh, investors are finding it very hard to engage in the private sector, especially in mining, is because of too much red tape in, in, in government. And we want to reduce that red tape by establishment of a one-stop shop, a PESA, a PESA type uh, 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 arrangement. Number four, we are highly recommending assessment and inventory of minerals potential of the Bangsamoro court territories as soon as possible. Number five, Capacity development and capacity mobilization within the Bangsamoro Development Agency and other agencies, including on wealth sharing and host concessionaire relationships. Number six, initiating work on the framework for sustainable development as noted in the Bangsamoro Basic Law. And number seven, starting work on the establishment of the Bangsamoro Sustainable Development Board as stated in the Bangsamoro Basic Law. And number eight, we are keen on uh, experiencing and sharing of experiences from Asia and other parts uh, of the world regarding uh, mining practices. Ladies and gentlemen, let me end this presentation with the quote from no less than MILF Chairman al Hadz Murad Ibrahim during his speech at the turnover of the Bangsamoro Development Plan Ceremony at Camp Darapanan Maguindanao in November 2, 2014. And I quote, the Bangsamoro wish to reclaim their destiny and become a beacon of hope for the country as a trusted partner in regional and national affairs with all Bangsamoro communities coexisting in peace, respecting diversity of culture, and securing a dignified quality of life. Thank you very much, and good morning. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. So, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for Q&A. Anyone with questions? Or would you like uh, any of the gentlemen here to start with the, uh, some remarks to kick it off? Uh, actually, I want to 
give a remark on the basis uh, that our, our chairman presented a while ago on our development plan. Uh, actually, if you observe the situation on the ground, right after the sign of the cup, uh, the uh, vertical conflict significantly re reduced and people in the ground very optimistic and uh, very hopeful this time for the 40 years complete in the Bangsamoro areas uh, maybe something different and they will uh, uh, expecting uh, something uh, good for them because of this process with this uh, the uh, development plan crafted by the BDA uh, we formulated in pacing page one page two the page one is focus on the transition managing the expectation and uh, assuring the sustainable peace will take place once the Bangsamoro uh, Transition Authority will come and finally the Bangsamoro government. With these premises, we would like to uh, make attention to our uh, private sectors that the in phase one really we work on the how we can put the foundation of so sustainable peace with uh, the people really feel that the coming Bangsamoro government with the partners partnership with the national government really make a difference for them this time. So we in the Bangsamoro Development Agency found out that the 40 years conflict in the Bangsamoro affect the people really uh, in the uh, one in their culture, I mean the social aspect, even the education and health. Second, the institutional uh, of the government, I mean the functioning of government in the uh, community are very weak. So therefore, if we want uh, intervention to be sustainable, we should start on the aspect that we must capacitate the people. And we should mindset them into the development that make them progress and not dependent, independent, for them to utilize their local resources uh, effectively and smoothly, and that make them very conducive for the private sector to enter to, enter to them, partner them. So therefore the message here, the BDA is mandated to facilitate partner donors and the private sector. We want partner them in the PS1, focusing in the institutionalization of the ground, and second, to capacitate them in the uh, uh, skills and education that make them a partner to whoever come into the Bangsamoro area. Thank you very much.
Rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Distinguished uh, guest, friends from uh, Mining Hub, I will try to make my regional message uh, short as much as possible. I just like to add uh, that uh, there will be two sources of growth in the Bangsamoro. One is uh, the agriculture, fisheries, and forestry. Since 63.5% uh, of the Bangsamoro economy is in agriculture. And the other one is mining industry. As long as, uh, as, long as the, the extraction and uh, other um, related pertaining to that uh, will be done in judicious manner, meaning environmental safety and other uh, related uh, compliance shall be observed. And but, so I think I have to end there. <laughs> yeah, uh, we will be very, very glad to respond to your uh, query uh, as much as we can. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, really delighted to see such an amazing amount of interest in the mining sector in the Bangsamoro. And indeed, it is very timely because, as Chairman Saf mentioned in his presentation, we have just launched the Bangsamoro Development Plan and no other but the president and the chairman of the MIF were there to raise the occasion. And it was a very, uh, I think, encouraging affair for everyone. Perhaps uh, close to a thousand people were in attendance at any one given point in time when President Aquino was there. I just wanted to amplify a couple of things that have been said by my colleagues earlier. I think the point that Ustad Yaqub, our executive director, makes is that about the new mantra that everybody has talked about, inclusive growth. Uh, essentially, I think, Ustad, that is your point. How do you involve communities? And I think uh, it's very often used the term, but I'm not sure everybody really understands how to pursue inclusive growth, and particularly in an industry like mining. Uh, perhaps sometimes easier done in agriculture. And there, I think, the whole area of creating shared values with the communities rather than simply charity or CSR comes into play. And also dealing with an area which is conflict affected. And that's why the premise of the Bangsamo Development Plan is really on sustainable human development and peace building. So how do you then partner with the datus that you'll be dealing with in Bangsamo? And many of them control large lands and large parts of Bangsamoro. And there is a big challenge of the MILF to deal with these uh, chiefdoms or feudal lords. And we have to see how that pans out. But there will be always the issue of bringing in the communities, providing for health and education, as Ustad mentioned, providing for more equitable, let's say, host concessionaire relationships. And in that regard, your experience from other parts of the world will be very, very valuable. And how you've been able to do that. I was talking to the Ambassador of Canada earlier on. And he was telling how the, the Aborigines and the First Nations and so on have been brought on board in terms of the mining industry in Canada. And some of that experience will be very, very useful also to bring to bear in the Bangsaro. Indeed, as Chairman Saf mentioned in his presentation, sharing of a case like this from Asia elsewhere in the world would be very, very useful. Um, I would have other comments. Perhaps we should stop here just as a teaser and entertain questions as well. Uh, well, MRL Gold, uh, Philippine Mining Company. Thank you for coming. It's been very good to have you here. Um, I guess my question is a triple, triple banger, but, but it's one that we're all thinking of, I guess, because um, I hear that you have exclusive uh, administration of mineral resources in your area. Um, presently in the Philippines, we have BOE looking after oil and gas, we have energy looking after minerals, we have the uh, looking after the environment and administering those aspects, which we all deal with. Um, those organizations still be working with the banks tomorrow, and will they be the organizations to deal with or will they be a separate framework? Uh, of course, uh, uh, it will be different. 
Uh, in fact, uh, once the uh, uh, Bangsamoro Basic Law is uh, passed in Congress, and I have mentioned to you uh, uh, what kind of uh, very unique uh, relationship uh, that the Bangsamoro and the central government will have, uh, then uh, the, the Bangsamoro Parliament will start its work. And of course, uh, depending on the priorities, uh, we'll uh, start uh, formulating uh, different